Hi everybody, my name is Mohamed Raza Ashuri and I have a PhD degree in software engineering, more specifically in software security and program analysis. In this quick talk, I am going to introduce dynamic chain analysis as a powerful mechanism in software testing and program um, security. So first off, I start with a brief introduction regarding current security concerns and real-life software systems, then I introduce dynamic taint tracking or dynamic taint analysis uh, by a couple of examples. And finally, we plunge into the details of this technique and discuss about its challenges in real world scenarios. So let's get a start. It's 2021 and we still hear such a news as Twitter accounts get hacked by exploiting uh, zero day vulnerabilities in its authentication system. Facebook accidentally released its uh, user accounts which were saved as plain text for millions of users. Google has closed its social network platform after some data leaks and security concerns. And it seems each and every year hackers manage to perform more sophisticated cyber attacks by exploiting unknown security issues uh, in software systems. And as a result, they can successfully steal valuable information of millions of people. So in this regard, a, a recent study from IBM estimated that the total cost of data breaches associated with software vulnerabilities was around two billion US dollar among top 500 companies worldwide. And it was just for the year 2018. In this regard, dynamic taint analysis or dynamic taint tracking uh, is a mighty technique that helps us uh, to detect and defend against various information leaks and security vulnerabilities in software code. So this approach essentially works based on monitoring dynamic execution of program and its runtime. More concretely, in dynamic taint analysis, we label sensitive data coming from any arbitrary environment. So these environments are indeed trust, untrusted external environments that we don't have fully control on them, i.e. user inputs, uh, network package, file system, external processes, external devices, etc. And labeling this data from this sort of environment are very important in this technique. Then we try to trace these labeled data, or we call them taints, and uh, throughout the program execution. And finally, we try to prevent these taints going to untrusted channels in insecure ways. For instance, going to network or user terminal or to database system or external devices, etc. So here you can see how dynamic taint analysis works. So as you can see here, it comprises three main components, namely sources, propagation, and sinks. So sources identify where sensitive data can enter into a target program. So that allows us to mark this data with taint labels. Um, in other uh, words, we label them. And so for example, uh, input arguments of a program from keyboard or data um, come from file system or network requests such as web forms can typically be identified as tainted sources. The propagation component is a set of policies that define how to compute taints for values that are derived from sensitive data. For example, in this simple equation here, x equals secret plus y. So here, X will be tainted by both secret and Y. So the propagation rule is generally called explicit propagation, but we also have implicit propagation, for instance, by considering control flow dependent. So here you can see operations that are control dependent on the tainted secret. However, we should note that implicit propagation are rarely used in real-world cases. And this is due to multiple challenges such as overtainting and huge overhead. And the final component is sinks. 
So sinks are basically um, program locations such as instructions, functions and methods where we should control the state of things. For example, data being sent over the network shouldn't contain certain type of things. For example, malicious commands or any private data. By defining a proper set of source, sinks, and propagation policies, uh, tank tracking can be effectively used for detecting a wide range of security issues and data leaks in digital systems. It's important to note that tank tracking or tank analyzers is not limited to program analyzers only. It can be very useful in several domains such as security, privacy, software engineering, etc. For example, preventing command injection or cross-site scripting, detecting information leaks as well as software testing, debugging, profiling and other software engineering applications, to name just a few. So now let's talk a little bit about integrity and taint analysis and the correlation. So now let's talk a little bit about integrity and taint analysis and their relationship. So in the world of information security, integrity generally refers to accuracy and completeness of data in a program. In this regard, taint analysis allows us to focus on integrity in order to prevent data from being uh, modified or exploited by an unauthorized party, i.e. a hacker. So it is in brief about trustworthiness of data or resources. So in a data breach that comprises integrity, we see a attacker, we see a hacker may seize data and modify it. So a typical example of that is a newspaper that prints secret info leaked from White House, from government, for example, or gives wrong sources. So what are the benefits of software integrity? You know, we can actually identify coding defects and address them sooner, even during the code development before releasing that to the market. And of course, we can mitigate various cyber threats. So here you can see one example of integrity in a simple piece of code. So here our policy is user input should not influence who becomes president. So in the first line we have a variable which is called designated uh, president and that holds the name of president. And then the second line we get some information from user or from source or external environment. We don't have control on this data. And line 3, actually, because of this assignment, user input uh, propagates to uh, our important, basically, variable, which is designated president. So here, we have a integrity violation. So low integrity information propagates on line 3 to high integrity variable. Here is another example of that, which actually we have implicit taint. And here, the, the impact of the control flow line 3, uh, uh, the if basically uh, um, um, command here uh, has impact on the uh, value of president. So, confidentially means protecting system, uh, protecting sensitive information such as credit card or general or government information from being accessed uh, by unauthorized parties, right, or public basically users. So in other words, only the people who are authorized uh, can gain access to sensitive data. So data confidentiality is mostly about protecting data against un, uh, intentional, against unintentional, unlawful, or unauthorized access. So it's about keeping information secret in sensitive fields such as government, industry, banking, etc. Uh, one of the examples would be like credit card information must not be visible to public, right? So here is an example that illustrates this point. 
So our policy in this piece of code is credit card number should not leak to visible. And visible, we can imagine this is a public variable uh, or is a general variable or global variable. However, credit card number, the first variable, is a private property, so it shouldn't be visible to you know, unauthorized parties. So, um, here as you can see on the line, basically, if control, uh, secret information actually, on line, in the second line, secret information propagate to X. So, secret information here means credit card number. And on line 4, this control flow or if control flow, the secret information partially propagate to visible. Therefore, when uh, users access to visible, they can estimate or they can guess that credit card number is more than 1000. So it limits the estimation calculation process and they can basically reach credit card number by performing a you know, limited uh, brute force attack or having some guess. So now I have a quiz for you so you can pause uh, this video and think about how to uh, basically resolve it. So suppose that get x, uh, which is a function, returns 5. So write down the labels after each operation. Is there any policy violation here? So on the right side, you can see our policy. So far, I've talked about the advantage of dynamic taint tracking or analysis. So, however, I want a little bit touch uh, its drawback. So, although dynamic taint tracking seems to be quite useful, this approach has its own downside, especially for analyzing real world enterprise programs. The main challenge for performing dynamic chain tracking is performance overhead. That being said, in order to perform dynamic chain tracking in a traditional or conservative way, we have to instrument each code instructions why to look up the taints of its operand at runtime and then compute the chain propagation and then modify the chain states, which can be naturally quite expensive. So as you can see here, we have a couple of lines. We have four lines, highlighted lines here, which are which have which they have to be basically instrumented. So instrumentation here means a mechanism for being able to track them at runtime to see what's going on between them and how data propagate between them. So there are many approaches for the implementation, for example, shadow variable and so on, but this is not in this lecture. So if you pay attention to this piece of code, you can see uh, the important parts actually us are these three lines. Y equal to secret, then Z is equal to C multiple Y, and out equal to C. So these are important, basically, uh, uh, statements that uh, impact on the output. So, however, in a conventional dynamic time tracking, we have to instrument all unnecessary lines, which impose substantial runtime overhead and actually slow down the runtime performance. So, according to a uh, reputable research work, which was conducted by Newsom in 2005, uh, the conventional uh, dynamic chain tracking system can slow down the program performance up to five times, which is significant. And that explains why, despite its usefulness, this approach is not widely popular between software companies and developers. So, now let's talk about an open question or a research question. So, in order to address uh, the overhead issue associated with dynamic time tracking, many scientists in the past tried to leverage a static analysis. A static analysis means analyzing code or binary um, without actually compiling or ex executing that. Uh, to reduce and remove unnecessary statement in program analysis, i.e. those you know, uh, highlighted statements, it seems to be unnecessary. 
So, um, however, there are some downsides with performing a static analysis. You know, the source code, this approach um, mostly requires the source code, uh, which is often unavailable because companies, especially for real world software, because companies and individuals don't like to share source code because they want to protect their intellectual property. Furthermore, um, since in static analysis, we don't have access to actual runtime, actual runtime data, we have to consider an over approximation regarding the potential executable path during the program execution, which naturally results in substantial false positive and over tainting. So, um, a potential or a useful approach would be kind of, you know, hybrid analysis. So in this technique, uh, which would be a combination of dynamic thing tracking and aesthetic thing tracking, uh, we can actually have more precise state uh, space. However, this is a topic for actually many research and could be actually there are so many research you can do and in order to find best basically uh, trade-off so in conclusion uh, in this talk we discuss about recent cyber attacks and unknown vulnerabilities dynamic tank analysis and its components uh, we, we talked about integrity and confidentiality and about challenges in this work and finally we introduced some potential research work in this area. Thank you very much for your attention and please write down your questions. Good luck.